as individuals, we are strong, but as a community, we are powerful. Tell me what you need, and I'll do what I can. Who are we? MSI. Who are we? MSI. Who are we? Bienvenidos everyone, my name is Alan Rulas. This is another episode of Get Going with MSI, a podcast here ready to put the spotlight on one of the brothers. This is episode number six. We have none other than... It's your boy Jeremiah, Mr. Bless Riggins. What's good, y'all? Yes, yes. So my first question to you is, how are you doing? As you know, this is like notorious on my behalf. I want to check in. Mental health, that's what we do. Yeah. How are you feeling, Mr. Bless? Yeah, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm, I'm always blessed. Um... <laughs> You know, recently, like, when people have been asking me, like, how I'm doing, you know, like, I've been, I'm saying, like, all right or okay, because, you know, we're going through midterm season. Exactly. Um, if I'm being real, you know, it's, I'm, it's just a lot that I'm doing. Yeah. Um, other than midterms as well, um, being the resident advisor for the Ujima community, which is the black culture theme floor in housing yeah. that we have here on campus. Um, doing a lot with that. And just, yeah, just trying to, like, manage all my responsibilities. It can, it could definitely weigh on me a little bit, but um, always, you know, looking to the positive, really trying to manage my time so that I can really, you know, be refreshed once I get my responsibilities done. That's, that's, that's where I feel the most, you know. So I definitely want to follow up with that because I myself can agree to this. I definitely do agree that that's so important to talk about. You know, the second question that I usually have is, you know, how's your mental health, you know? Um, and then after that, I want to know why Mr. Bless? So do as you wish, which one you want to answer, or maybe you want to intertwine them. Let me know. <laughs> I would say that Mr. Bless has a lot to do with my mental health. Um, Ooh, that's good. So... The whole thing about Mr. Bless, you know, like um, that really comes about with me being unapologetically Christian um, and not to the sense where like I'm preaching to folks every day, you know, trying to get people to convert to Christianity because that's that's not what it's about. Um, I think it's really about just being positive, being joyful, um, being optimistic and, you know, really like really radiating and um, spreading those positive vibes um, to other folks. Um, because life is hard, you know, people um, can be in stressful situations. So I really just want to be kind of a stress relief, kind of like, kind of like a, a Tylenol type of way um, for people. <laughs> I'm like, you know? be, be that daily over the counter drug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's that's really what I try to do, and that's where like the persona of Mr. Bless comes from. Yeah. You know, um, when people ask me how I'm doing, I usually say I'm blessed. You know, um, I might say when I live in a room, have a blessed day. Um, and that has a lot to do with my mood as well. And I think that's where the mental health portion comes in. Yeah. Um, because it's it can be hard to be so positive and... Oh my so, gosh, the like, universe is... <laughs> <laughs> Not for real. This is getting too <laughs> real. This is getting too real. Okay, continue, continue. It can, it can be really hard being so positive yeah. and so optimistic when uh -huh. when so many things um, is like coming at you. Yes. And it really like trying to bring you down yes um and you're trying to spread yourself in so many ways yes um it's almost and sometimes it's not really appropriate to be so positive you know when things is going on that that really like it, it sucks you know it, it sucks does. it you know we just need to have some type of community and come together you know and just really reflect on what is happening yeah um i feel like there's such thing as toxic positivity yes to being so insensitive to be like, oh, it's okay, it's fine, you know, just go on with your day, you can just, just have a blessed day, you know? But like, no, no, you can't always be like that, you really can't. And um, I would say recently, yeah, I've um, definitely realized and have felt that. Yeah. Um, and it has mostly had to do with the racial incident that occurred earlier in September. Um, with the racial slur that was sprayed on the back of the dumpster yeah. in an um, off 
campus apartment complex yeah. um, and was directed towards the black community. Um, so, and then that just led to a whole bunch of things that kind of showed that the sense of anti-blackness is allowed to exist here on campus in housing yeah. um, and in just like, just a way that the admin responds or their lack of response and just not really knowing how to deal with it. Yeah. Um, it just really, it, it really felt like they, they, not that they didn't care, yeah. but that like they really didn't know what to do. With that circumstance. Or, yeah, with that circumstance and how to respond. And it made, it made, it, it reflected, it reflected off as like they didn't care. Even though I know that they just straight up, straight up, they don't care. Like, it's, it's it's hard to explain, but it was very. <laughs> I don't, Jeremiah. I think that you're in a moment where you don't need to explain. You know what yeah. I mean? I think that what you're referring to is the action speaks for themselves, and y'all were able to read it. We, as a community, were able to feel it as well. Mm -hmm. It's more so very heavy to bear. You know what I mean? I feel like you're saying all the things that you need to say. And I understand alongside other people who understand, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The type of uh, voice that needs to be presented, the type of messaging, the type of um, the, the ideal way to go about things like this. And the thing about it is that like folks who are affected by it directly, you know, how can we support? How can we promote advocacy? How can we air these things? You know, um, at the end of the day, coming back. So much weight is put on our students, in this case, such as student leaders who happen to need to be able to present, project, do. And yeah. you're talking about toxic positivity. My goodness gracious, I definitely agree 110%. The idea of presenting yourself is one thing, right? Um, but I think that being first generation, coming from a household where things are not as necessarily like, whoa, Stability, you are the stability. You're coming to school to grind, to make yourself a better individual. Let me tell you something, it puts a pressure and sometimes students have no other resort than to just suck it up buttercup and go on with your day. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But ideally, kind of like breaking down stigmas, reassuring students that we're here to be able to be a resource, to be vulnerable, to make sure that you ask those questions, to be able to be present, that makes a difference in a student's life. Especially, like we were talking about earlier, having a community to fall back on, you know what I mean? And prioritizing our students' health, prioritizing, prioritizing our students' needs. And in this case, you know, I was well aware of it because of the day, like day tithing and all that. Mm -hmm. And talking about it is something that needs to be addressed, something that is not just about that week. It's not just about that month, ladies and gentlemen. I always talk about this because it's kind of like when you're talking about something that's trendy or something that's up up in the air, people are like, you know, shocked and stuff like that. I'm like, I'm like, what are you talking about? I was just like, talk about it today, similar to tomorrow and the day coming, you know? Mm -hmm. Keep that momentum because it makes a difference, you know? Ideally, it's like today, tomorrow, and forever because you need to talk about those conversations. You need to establish those tones and let them know what's up because we're here, we're present, and what can we get done, you know? That's what's up. Yes, sir. Let me tell you. So, I mean, outside of that, Mr. Bless, um, one of the other questions that one of the brothers asked was like, hey, what keeps you going every day? It's ironic because we just talked about positive, toxic positivity. <laughs> um, what keeps you motivated going every day? Because that's what students want to know. You know, you when you walk in a room, you are that light. You know, you are that individual who folks look up to. Recently, let me tell y'all. Uh, I was able to step on in um, to a meeting and I was like, hey, you know, what's up, Brother Jeremiah? And I see uh, Brother Jeremiah's schedule and I'm just like, bro, like there is, <laughs> the, to make this happen has been a mission, you know? But that's obviously what students are seeing. You know, you mentioned being an RA, doing other leadership roles that we're gonna, um, you touched up in the beginning, but we're gonna like brush up on more. Mm -hmm. um, what keeps you going every day? Um, honestly, mm -hmm. I feel like I really draw my strength and my perseverance from my connection with the Lord, my faith in God. Um, there's this scripture that I like to say, actually, from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 7, and it says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, yes. whose hope and confidence is in him. Um, and... I, that's, that's really, honestly, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm being like, yeah, be, candid, yeah keep it real, like, man. 
that's that's where I get my motivation and my my drive to keep going and of to course. do well um, is my my faith of God, my um, like my my prayer life, my um, just like reading reading the Bible and just really trying to be like a manifestation of God's love and God's kindness and joy. Yeah. And I know that not everyone, and you know, I mean, you don't have to be, not everyone is in tune with their faith or um, is a Christian or whatever it may be. Um, but I feel like it is possible to be blessed um, if you have something that you can hold on to, yes. if you have some type of source, some type of strength, some type of community that you identify with, that you really, that you feel self-actualized in, that you can draw energy from, that you can get your motivation from, that yes. you can really just be able to feel comfortable and feel that you belong yes. and having that feeling will give you the motivation, will give you the confidence to keep on going. Um, so that's how I'll relate my, how I feel to like everyone else. The thing here, ladies and gentlemen, is keeping it 110% real. Um, yeah. This is why those conversations are so important because every brother has their own path has their version. own story and I embrace it because that's something that I definitely align with. Sometimes you need that extra oomph. You mm -hmm. need that extra source. Uh, me growing up, let me tell you something. My grandma made sure that I knew the scriptures that I knew everything that I needed to know to make sure that I was blessed, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's something that I car carry with me near and dear to my heart because definitely it goes ties into my roots. It ties into how, for instance, in adversity, you need that extra source. And this plays out differently for everybody. You know, that's the best part about it. To be your authentic yeah. self, it yeah. shines through. And so maybe if it's one way for you, it's one way for another person. And so this is very important because some brothers identify, you know what I mean? And they will be aligning with what what, what what motivates you and what keeps you going like they're asking they're asking and they're like well there you go you know he stays blessed because well he looked up something in, in there and it says jeremiah mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> obviously it goes a little bit more in depth to that but the idea here is um scripture you know what i mean yeah. and that could translate into however you want to manifest it you know at the end yeah. of the day you're here doing your business and you're obviously influential so hence why we have you here today. Um, outside of that, let's talk about um, our aim and leadership roles that you previously touched upon. Something that you would consider the highlight um, for this uh, current semester that you want to share with us. Um, so yeah, I shared a little bit about shared a little bit about being a resident advisor for the Ujima community. Um, that has been. I would say where I've spent a lot of my time in my leadership roles, um, because not only do like I live there, you know, but um, it's was been very active, especially like with the BSU. Um, we had like a an Ujima open house um, where we had games and like a little like a relay race thing, and was like just had food and stuff. So it was really fun. We did that last month um <laughs> i gotta say i i can't go without adding this portion in i used to be a part of <laughs> at my community college y'all okay don't don't come at me but i was just like i was part of umoja at uh -huh. my community college in norgo college i just wanted to embrace that because i, I want to continue to elaborate more so but i'm very happy because i know some of my home girls are going to be watching this and i just wanted to like shout them out real quick and just like you know <laughs> I, I, I love y'all very much and i'll be seeing y'all very soon shout out san francisco shout out everywhere up cal north so i just wanted to say that but continue continue yeah yeah <laughs> Um, so with being the RA for Ujima and then also um, having four of my residents be officers also in the Black Student Union, um, I'm very grateful for them. Shout out to Nima, MK, Liam, and Shayi. Um, they are um, wonderful people, have helped me so much um, when it comes to the really... How, what 
Ujima is yeah. definitely this year. We're definitely way more active, um, more vocal, and advocating for the just equal treatment and um, everything that has been going on in housing because of the racial incident that did occur um, earlier in September. We had like a black student listening session in housing for those who have lived um, either previously or currently. Yeah. Um, and at that session, there was a lot of tears shed, a lot of pain that was being shared, a lot of trauma that was being shared. Um, and through that, with myself, the BSU, and other members of the Ujima community and mm-hmm. other black residents who live in housing, um, just being able to share our experiences and advocate for what we would like to see change. Um, I'm hopeful that change is coming. I'm very hopeful. I'm, for the professional staff in housing, I, um, I love them. Um, they, I know they're working hard to bring change um, for just diversity in general. And last night we had an event called Melanin and Mental Health that was hosted by the community coordinators in housing. Oh, wow. Um, and this was in response to the, the racial incident, this, the, um, the pain that the black residents have felt. Um, and it was just a spot where we were just able to heal. We did a, a breathing um, exercise led by Maisha Dunn, who is the CAPS liaison for the ARC, the African American Resource Center. Um, she is a wonderful person. Um, this, there was, we would play games, there was pizza, there was music, um, journal making, um, slime making. So it was just really, really, really healing and definitely, definitely allowed me to, um, to heal and just to feel better and kind of um, not move on, but just just to move forward yeah. with you know with what happened and be able to continue on. Yes. Um, because I, when everything was happening like a few weeks ago, I really was not myself. You know, I didn't say like I didn't say the word blessed for like three weeks. Yeah. Um, because I, yeah. I was I it did I was so emotionally congested. Yeah. With um with everyone's experiences. And just seeing the lack of response and just feeling so neglected, um, that really just, it just put me in a whole different mood. Um, but now, you know, I've, because of the melanin and the mental health and folks who have been talking with me and being my support systems, I'm definitely feeling more blessed, you know, like, like my old Mr. Blessed self and, you know, just definitely continuing continuing to heal it, t- it, t- it takes a time i will say um a lot of the times when you present yourself you know like you're doing the most and you're doing this and this and this people are like alarm like where's that energy i'm like well damn i've been up since like three in the morning yeah, right yeah. <laughs> and i said i'm like because I, people expect that like um, um, from, and i'm like i'm gonna deliver yeah it's just like when we have those moments you know two different scenarios obviously in the sense that sometimes we just we just need like our our our, our own time we needed that time to process. We need that time to heal. And that could play out differently. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you acknowledge it because it affects people differently. We're not always going to be on our 110%. We need those days when we're like bringing you back, getting everything everything sorted out. And then we come back. And it might take three weeks. It might take a couple of weeks. It might take whatever the case may be. Um, that's actually something that it's important because I feel that at times I'm bearing different roles that I embrace. But at times, like I said, I recently came out of a car accident and, you know, having panic from that incident, it's just kind of like, oh, you know, like it gets me out of my like my shell because I'm just like, no one likes that feeling. And then if you're going through stuff that you're recovering, it's kind of like it's going to it's going to make you feel something. So a lot of the times keeping that 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 face where it's like not everything's OK right now, but we'll pull through. You know what I That's mean? Right. That hope that that feeling, you know, it makes a difference. That's right. And it's good to check in with people because breaking those stigmas. Uh, what was uh, I forgot the works that you referred to. Um, Melanin and mental health. That is crucial. y'all. If you have the availability, take the initiative to make a resource happen. You know, um, the idea here is that we have MSI. Of course, we bring on folks and embracing them, whoever they are, whatever they need. We're here. Um, I just want to really hyperfixate breaking those stigmas of not expressing yourself. You know, express yourself. Say how you feel. And if you need to take a break, take a break. Talk to your professors. Talk to whoever is available here on campus, and you're able to do that. So transitioning over to MSI. 
what is that for you? You know, how has that been? And, you know, what do you want the brothers to know? Um, and then pause. And then just hold it and then just speak a little louder right here and then mm -hmm. you're good. So, three, two, just keep looking up and then go, um, and then come back. Three, okay. two, one. Um, MSI, um, definitely like, especially my freshman year, was my home away from home. It was with all the things that I'm involved in. Um, it, I really felt at that, at MSI, it was really the place where I could be myself. Yes. 100% un unapologetically, authentically, Jeremiah, Mr. Bless Riggins. Um, because it is it's such an accepting space and it is such a space for learning and growth, yes. especially when it comes just like socially and like when it comes to like learning about toxic masculinity and how that affects us as men, but then um, everyone else as well, um, especially being men of color. Yes. So... MSI has has been a haven, um, and I am excited to be one of the peer mentors this year um, for the sophomore class, half the sophomore class. I'm going to be meeting with them and, you know, um, just talking with them, giving them advice, and just, they can even give me advice as well, you know. It's just, it's, it's really about just deciding that connection and then um, making sure that you know, we are, we're, we're good and that we can grow and that we have the most of our opportunities on both ends. Um, so. I think that what you said right there was super important that we could both learn y'all. Yeah. That, that's, that's something um, I've learned from one of my professors back in my community college days. But it's just like the idea of like you leading, but also learning. Yeah. And that's important, y'all. I just, I just like, <laughs> <laughs> you just said, I didn't mean Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, because I feel, I feel like, I feel like when, when you when you go into a mindset of like okay I'm gonna teach you I'm gonna give you advice like you're so close minded yes and it's looking kind of hypocritical because you want them to be open minded and really like kind of grow and exactly. learn but yes you might have more experience and wisdom oh my gosh Jeremiah speak but <laughs> the experiences that someone else has yes we can always learn from that and try to take from it even exactly. if they they are someone who is a mentee, yes. who is a student, yes. who is um, someone that is not of higher authority or whatever, you know? Yes. Um, I feel like we can all learn from each other, you know, no matter what our experiences are. Student empowerment, I will say, that's, that's, that's gold right there, that's <laughs> gold. Uh, to learn from one another and to empower ourselves, you know, empower others. Um, so yeah, I mean, you're gonna be a mentor, that's mm -hmm. something new. MSI, literally, you know, you're, <laughs> you're like a walking version of what MSI stands for, you know what I mean? <laughs> we are Dang. literally doing the most to be able to empower our students, you yeah. know what I mean? And that, at the end of the day, translates into what is academic success, presenting resources, student advocacy, using our voices, making sure we have a safe space, the resources available that are able to have our students do what they like on campus. Mm -hmm. In this case, you're doing what you need to do. And then me, on the other hand, I'm doing television, radio, and everything in between. <laughs> so that all derives right. back from having a sense of belonging, having a space where you could be yourself, listening, build confidence as to who you are, mm -hmm. you know, that changes mm -hmm. a lot of what we are here on campus. You know, being a person of color, it has those barriers, those things that we need to like, be like, all right, I'm gonna prove you wrong. You know what I mean? I'm gonna show up and show out. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, you know, when we talk about MSI, that's our home. That's where we come back and get the resources or the community that we need to be able to say, look, this is what's up, you know. Um, when we have our retreats and when we have our gatherings and everything, it's always good to see the brothers, but more, most definitely those who have been a part of MSI for those longevity of years, you know what I mean? Yeah. And we want to continue that momentum. It's a family at the end of the day. And I look up to you, uh, literally. <laughs> You're a one inch away. <laughs> uh, so keep it up, man. I mean, 
outside of that, we had a pending question, mm -hmm. uh, but it revolves around everything that we talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea here is, um, have you ever felt that you bit off more than you could chew? But I said because we did kind of talk about it with toxic positivity, different leadership roles, yeah. but I don't want to limit you in answering that question. Yeah. Yeah, I can definitely answer that question. Um, so, last year um, in the fall semester, um, it was my first time being a resident advisor, and it was also for the Ujima community. And that was actually the inaugural year of the Ujima community. I was the first RA for Ujima last year. Um, and so I was a first time RA. I was trying to do three upper division business classes um, and also pick up a computer science minor. Um, so I was doing the intro to computer science um, and then I was doing a math class for the computer science minor as well. Um, so I was doing that. I was trying to be the president of Divine Servants, which is the Christian club under the Black Student Union, um, which I'm still the president of now today. <laughs> um, <laughs> you just throw it. <laughs> um, I am also in the President Scholars Program, the Business Honors Program. Um, at the time, I was on a intramural basketball team. Oh my gosh! Um, I know the feeling. Yeah. Oh my, you're giving me so much. Um, okay, yeah. I feel like I'm forgetting some stuff. <laughs> And I apologize. No, you're, you're, <laughs> the, the point is you're balancing a lot. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> back to my point. Last, yeah. So last year, with being the first time RA yeah. and being the, um, and trying to do the computer science minor with the, all the other units I was taking, that was ridiculous because <laughs> I was, I was struggling to be an RA because it was like, not only is it a big responsibility, but it was our first time coming, coming back to campus after COVID. So I was back on campus for the first time, you know, having to go to class um, in person and just doing everything in person. So it was a really big adjustment. Um, long story short, I had to end up withdrawing from the computer science minor um, and like taking a W for the class because I just realized like I just I just couldn't do it. Of course. Um yeah. there was yeah. there was so much that I was trying to do. Yeah. And it was like it's not like it wasn't too hard, like the content and stuff. Yeah. But I couldn't spend as much time as I wanted to on it. And that ended up me being like inefficient in everywhere else I was doing. Yes. You know, I was spreading myself so thin that it was like I was there, but it wasn't 100% me that I was able to give all my time and effort into it. Of course. You know? Yes. Um, so I was being diminished in all those areas, and I was like, something something had to go. You know, in order for me to succeed, I had to take a step back and kind of drop something and lose one battle so that I could win the war. Oh, you know, oh, it was it was oh, it was a it was such a it was a strategy. It was a strategic, but <laughs> but yeah, I had I came, I came to the realization that I um I should drop the computer science minor. I ended up um, deciding that I'm gonna do a fifth year as well um, because I was like, what's first of all, what's the rush? Um, and like it would just put so much more pressure on me to die, try to do four years yes. with everything else that I'm trying to do. Yes. Um. So. I was like, I'm going to do a fifth year. I'm going to lighten my load just a little bit mm -hmm. so that I can be successful in everything that I'm trying to do. Of course. Um, so that's, it, and it was a really big, it was hard decision. It was really hard, you know, because you would have asked my high school self if you, that like, you know, hey, you're going to graduate in five years. You're going to have a W on your transcript. I'll be like, yo, what the heck happened? What, yeah. what is going on? Like, yeah. this is like a quarter life crisis. Like, what's, what's going on? Like, I would have freaked out. But I feel like, I'm definitely more mature in the sense that you have to be real with yourself. Exactly. You definitely have to be real with yourself. Yes. Give yourself some grace, you know, especially when you're doing so many things that require so much of your time and effort. You know, you're gonna, you're not gonna be perfect all the time. Exactly. You're definitely not gonna be perfect all the time. Um, so, and you really have to, a lot of times, be your best friend. Yes. Um, and just be able to 
make those decisions and be able to kind of motivate yourself and be happy with those decisions um, so that you can end up, you know, winning that war, like I said. Yes. You know, even though you lost that battle, you know, you could just pick yourself up and exactly. let's keep it going. You might have to make some adjustments, some dodge, some moves, you know, switch up the game plan, but we're still going to go. Um, so that's, that's, that's what I had to do. And that's where I'm at now. I like the, I, I like this so much because the universe is like throwing this at me. <laughs> like, this thing at me right now. Um, but definitely 110% make some moves, you know, go with the flow. I call it embracing. Yeah. Um, the idea here is 110% right. This is why, you know, Jeremiah is the individual that you are. Um, most definitely, I think that you said, would you say something to win the war? What was the quote? lose a battle to win the war to win the war so we'll put it at that that's gonna be like the statement you know um because at the end of the day you know uh everyone's journey is different but we empower ourselves with what that uh with that quote um with that brother jeremiah i will say i'll leave it here because i want to make sure that i have the time to tell you uh that you are one outstanding individual uh keep doing what you're doing um yes, i say this to a uh, majority of the brothers, but a lot of the times when I have that need for inspiration, it comes back to Jeremiah, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, so keep doing what you do, and most definitely we'll be uh, touching bases. Hopefully uh, everything goes through with finals and then obviously midterms and everything. Yeah. Um, outside of that, uh, yeah, we're done for the day. For Ladies sure. and gentlemen, this is Brother... Jeremiah, Mr. Bless Regans. Yes, and we'll be all seeing you. We'll be seeing y'all very, very soon, amigos. Bye. <laughs>